Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com, and this month we've been covering sequencers in Reactor. So far, we've mostly been working with the Multiplex 16 module, and I want to show you how the other modules in this menu work as well. We'll be working with the 16 step version, but they're all exactly the same besides the number of steps. Earlier this month, I built a multi slider GUI that can be used to quickly enter 16 values into the sequencer module. And in that example, I used a multiplex module, but we can delete that and all the code controlling it and replace it with one of our 16 step sequencers. And just wire it up to the router exactly the same way. So in the first video, I was saying that I'm not really that fond of these sequencers because they're a little clunky to work with in terms of the way that they're implemented to me. I feel like it's unnecessarily difficult to sync them to MIDI um, in any meaningful way. But that doesn't mean that they don't have uses, and you can do some pretty cool things with them actually. You just have to uh, build around their strengths. So. What I'm going to do here is connect the gate amplitude and the reset inputs to be controlled by the gate module. So whenever we receive a new MIDI input, we're going to restart the sequencer and the output of the sequencer is going to be scaled by the MIDI velocity. And I actually want to make an option to have the scaling by MIDI velocity active or inactive. So this is pretty simple to add. I'm simply going to compare the gate to zero and this will create a signal that's either equal to zero or one. So it'll um, be maximum velocity all the time if we're using this one. And then I'll just create a router that allows you to choose between the regular gate signal and the compared gate signal. And we can use a button to decide which is active. I'm going to name the button maximum velocity. And the way it's set up is actually a little deceptive. So I'm going to change the inputs here so that the maximum velocity is actually being used when the button is on. All right, so there we go. So that's how to control those inputs. And then I'll control the audio imp the clock input using an audio signal. So at this point, if the input is an oscillator from a synthesizer, then every time the oscillator begins a new cycle, we'll select a new value from our sequencer. And this can be used to pretty cool effect. And I'll show you how that works in the same setup that we were using in video two this month, which is a simple, very simple synthesizer that consists only of a sawtooth oscillator and a low pass filter. And we'll modulate the cutoff point of the filter using the sequencer. So in order to use the sequencer with the modulation setup we had earlier this month, I'm going to connect its output to a send module so we can get it into the modulation area that we created. So the speed of the sequencer at this point in time is controlled by the frequency of the oscillator and that means it's going to go faster when the oscillator is at a higher pitch and it'll go slower when the oscillator is at a lower pitch. So with the lower frequencies, we're getting a wobble bass type of a sound. And at the upper frequencies, we're getting something more like a uh, FM type of a sound. And I kind of want to be able to control 
the speed that we're getting from our oscillator and we can do that in a somewhat crude fashion using the frequency divider which is a pretty interesting and rarely used module and if we run the input into the frequency divider give it an amplitude of one and use a, a knob that controls both the C plus and C minus inputs then we can control the speed of the sequencer in some way. It's kind of like slowing it down by a, uh, one octave in pitch every time you increase the speed value. Alright, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Thanks for watching.